ladies, I am so pumped to be here with you guys today to talk. Um, how many of you guys aren't, like, women's sessions are not your favorite? That was me growing up. I feel you. I'm with you. Don't worry. I laugh at Jesus all the time because that was me, and now I'm up here. Jesus is so funny, guys. He's so funny. All right. So we're talking today about femininity restored. And, and what does that mean and all these different things. And if you're here and you're kind of like me, um, the reason why I struggled, I have two older sisters who are awesome, love them, but they were like really, really, really your typical girly girls and I wasn't, you know what I mean? So like they loved ballet and did it for like eight years or 10. I did it for one when I was four and I stopped when I was five. Um, they loved Barbies and uh, I just didn't get why they're cool. They don't do anything. Like, they, they, seriously, they don't do anything, okay? The one that I liked was the one that flew because she was like an action figure. That was my jam. And just different things like that. So sometimes we, I want to bring up what it means to be a woman because it doesn't mean if you like pink or not because I don't like pink. And that doesn't mean that I'm less of a woman. Does that make sense? And so we're here to like really speak truth into these things. And I grew up kind of thinking that I wasn't enough or that I wasn't female enough because I was constantly comparing myself to my older sisters. How many of you are the youngest in the family? Yeah. You guys are the best. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm biased, it's true. Okay, so for me, my identity of what it meant to be a woman and my identity of um, all these different things really started being restored in a huge way through knowledge. Um, I was the kid that asked why a thousand times. Um, so growing up, I was in the hospital a lot and before they did anything, I would ask the doctor like, what are you gonna do exactly? Like a little, I was like seven years old, like, but okay, show me the x-rays and show me exactly where you're going and why. That was me. So kind of, I think this kind of started with me as well when it came to my faith. And so it wasn't until I learned about theology of the body, I don't know if that's coming up or not, there we go. It wasn't until I learned about theology of the body and really diving in. And so raise your hand if you've grown up Catholic your whole life, cradle Catholics. Being cradle Catholic is great, it's also difficult, why? Because we've been hearing the story since we're little. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, we get it. There was Adam and Eve, and everything was great, and then they came and ruined it all. And that's she's the reason why we have period pain, and it's fine. And it's, just, <laughs> and it's this thing of like, no, there's actually way more here than the thing. When I dove in and realized that it's not an apple. Did you guys know that? It doesn't say apple anywhere in the Bible. It blew my mind. I was like, this could have been a guava. <laughs> You never know, okay? So really like diving into scripture is where we, we kind of learn about this. And I love this image of Michelangelo. Where is this found? Sistine Chapel. Fun fact, I just realized, you know how old he was when he painted this? He was like close to 80. Yeah. What the heck? Okay, great. So here we see the creation story of Adam and Eve. And we see God over here, Adam over here. Behind God, what's that big thing? Wrong organ? It's a brain. Good job. It's a brain, right? So we're seeing that everyone thinks coming from the mind of God. And we see in the first creation story, we have Adam and Eve were created together. So man and woman were created together. And they were said to be fruitful and multiply. In the second creation story, I kind of like it. And maybe this is just me being dramatic. But I like that we make a grand entrance, you know? So like Adam is alone in the garden. And he's looking around. And nothing makes sense without us. And he's just like... These animals are cool, and I'm naming the animals. And he's like, wow, giraffe, super cool, and wow, bird, super cool. But I'm not these animals, right? And then he says, like, I look around, and I still feel alone. Right? And he experiences original solitude. And finally, here we come, right? Finally, they cast a deep sleep on Adam, and he wakes up, and he sees Eve for the first time. And he says, wow, man, which is how we get our name woman in my version of the Bible. Okay, so, <laughs> but really it's this idea that he says, he looks at her and he says, this one at last is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh, she shall be called woman. And this idea that Adam didn't make sense without Eve and Eve didn't make sense without Adam. And we see the complementarity. And I know that we have different things and we live in a world where kind of men and women are not honoring each other the way that we should. But I want to take a minute to recognize that men have characteristics that I thank Jesus, God Almighty, for. 
Um, women, I love you all, and I think you're really great. Would I want to live in a world full of women? <clears throat> I don't think I'd leave my closet. I don't, I don't, I don't think, mm, I love you all. No, okay. <laughs> Would I want to live in a world full of men? No, no, neither option sounds fun to me. They both sound absolutely horrific, okay? So this idea, like men and women, and we can just look at this in the ways the brain works, right? Women, we say 20,000 words a day. We're gifted, that's amazing, okay? Men, men say six. Okay? The way our brains work, women think of 500 things at the same time. And so we're watching, we could be watching a football game with our brother or a boyfriend or dad, and we're watching the football game but thinking about how I have to redo my nails, what I wore, what, I, what I'm going to wear to the party next week, the argument that I had with my friend two days ago, and I'm hungry, right? So we're thinking about all these things at the same time. What's the guy thinking about? The football game, okay? Now, what does this mean? I think in both of these things that have nothing to do with like, that's like all scientific studies, right? It shows that we really fit really well together. Like, thank God that men help us talk less <laughs> and men help us focus, right? And we live in this world, when it was Adam and Eve before the fall, they were able to see each other completely, honor each other, love one another, and help see the other. They didn't just, like that last line, right? They were naked without shame. It's not just physical nakedness. They were completely raw with one another. It's like in the movie Avatar. Who's seen Avatar? The blue one, the blue people. Okay, just making sense. There's a lot of it. In Avatar, like the way that she teaches him how to be an Avatar is like, I see you. Like, and it's like, wait, oh yeah, yeah, and he's like, yeah, I see you. No, 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 like, I see your being, I see your soul, I see all that you are. And before the fall, we had the perfect marriage, and Adam was able to honor Eve fully, and Eve was able to honor Adam fully. There was no lust, there was no doubts, there was no insecurities, it was just this pure, beautiful thing. And then, you know, the story goes that the fall entered and everything went horribly. No, it's horrible. But it's this aspect, right? What happened after the fall? We have division. The first thing that they do is hide. Who are they hiding from? They're hiding from God, but they're also hiding from each other, and they're hiding from themselves. And I think this is why we have to have a whole retreat called Restored, because we keep hiding from the one who can actually restore us. And so how can we dive in, and how can we kind of go about? Because after the fall happened, we have many, 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 many years and years and years where women haven't been treated correctly. And so this is where, like a little history of, you know, feminine history. <laughs> Long story short, it's not good. Okay, so for many, many years, we couldn't even vote. Um, people were trying to, like, stand up for themselves. The 1960s sexual revolution, don't even get me started. That's when the pill came out. That's when um, Playboy came out. There's so much to say there. That's for a whole other talk, a whole other day. Um, and then we have the Women's March, which is very anti-woman actually, but that's a whole other story. And then we have Cardi B, don't ask me how we got there or what she said. I, she, I think she's just like a good, I know she's Dominican and I'm Dominican and I love her for that, but also I don't know if I'm proud of calling her Dominican. Um, but it's this aspect of like so much confusion because we live in a world that's telling us 500 different things about what it means to be a woman, right? So here's the bottom line, like what does being a woman actually mean? What does it mean and how do we get here? Because we have what's called like fake feminism, right? And what, has anyone ever heard this term? Raise your hand if you know what I'm talking about. Okay, so fake feminism, like definition of feminism, right, is equality between the sexes, that men and women are created equal. Is this true? Yes or no? Make some noise if you say yes. That's not, that makes me nervous. So you think men and women are not created equal? Make some noise if you think no. Okay, let's clarify. Men and women are created equal, like in dignity. Like a man does not have more value than me. Let's clarify. Thank you, okay. But are we the same? No, again, 
thank you, Jesus, God Almighty. Like, thank God we're not. Now, not only is it that men and women are different, are you guys different as women? Are all women different? That's why women are so complicated and men are so complicated, because you can't put anyone in a box because we're all different. Amen? All right, and it's something to embrace. We've got to embrace these differences. Now, when we talk about fake feminism, it's this idea of like, because of the history that we've gone through, now I'm seeing a lot of women that are like putting men down and treating them horribly. Or I'm seeing, poor guy, one of my students the other day was holding the door for one of my teens and the girls just turned around and she was like, I can hold my own door. <laughs> the guy was so sad, guys. It just broke my heart. I was like, you're great. She just has issues she needs to go through. It's fine. It's fine. Um, so it's this aspect of like being able to receive the gift, right? And when it comes to feminism and what, being a woman, sometimes it's like we have all these things that are shattered. And they're shattered because of maybe we feel weak. Maybe, you know, the society says that if you're a mother or if you're a woman, um, it means that you can't be successful, right? It has all of these things that are complete lies. And today, I really want to focus on the aspect of really identifying with, like, what does it mean to be a woman? And before I clarify, I want to be 100% clear because I work with a lot of teenagers and I know that people struggle. If you're here and you're like me and you're not your typical woman, welcome. If you're here and you do not feel like you can identify as a woman because you have different struggles that you're going through, and maybe you're struggling with transgenderism or same-sex attraction or anything like that, like, you are welcome here. And we are here to really re help restore. Remember I had a student come up to me and said like, hey, I'm struggling with this and I don't know what to do. And I prayed with her and I looked at her and I said, you know, at the end of it, I just wanna pray that you're able to receive the gift of how you were created to be with those XX chromosomes, right? Because nothing can ever change that. Like nothing will ever change your XX chromosome. And my prayer for you today is that we can shed light and really understand what it means to be a woman what it means to be that, and, and kind of hone in on that in three different ways. And the three ways we're gonna talk about is gonna be as daughter, as sister, and as mother, okay? Now, daughter, aren't they cute? I don't know who these people are, I got them off Google. <laughs> don't they look happy though? Oh, yeah, cool. Okay, so, <laughs> the identity as daughter is gonna be at the root of everything. Why? Because that's like at the core. We, why is it difficult to be daughter or to unrecognize this? It's difficult because, raise your hand if your parents have ever done something that has hurt you. Okay, that's why it's difficult. Because our parents, I'm sure they're awesome. My parents are awesome. They've done stuff that has hurt me because they're not perfect. And so because maybe we have issues with our father, we have issues with our mother, maybe we don't even know who our parents are, Maybe we feel that we have like a struggle of abandonment. We feel lies that we're not good enough, that we're not loved. In the Hispanic culture, I know that oftentimes people joke around with us a lot. And so they'll be like, oh, like you're so stupid or you're so whatever. Like, why can't you be more like your sister? Or all these different things. And it's like, no, like those things actually hurt us and can affect the way that we are able to receive our gift and viewpoint as daughter. Um, a couple of years ago, I was in juvie for six months. Okay, you know, juvenile delinquency center. I wasn't in juvie, I was a counselor in juvie. <laughs> I just love seeing people just go awkwardly silent and they're like, why is she up there? All right. <laughs> I could be up here, might I add. Okay, so I went to school at Franciscan and I studied theology and psychology and my internship was in juvie. And I remember being there and honestly, like I was 20 years old and they gave me way too much freedom like, I was doing, like, one-on-one -on -one therapy session, group sessions, like, it was great, but I was like, a 20-year-old should not be doing all this. So, one of the days, I remember having, like, a conversation. We had, like, a group session, and we had the topic of, like, fathers and mothers come up. And one by one, I sat there as I heard each person tell me where their parents are. And the stories went something like this. Um... I don't know who my parents are. Like, I don't know who my father is or my mother is. Um, I was sexually abused by my father. Uh, my dad is a drug addict. Uh, my mother is in jail. My father abused my mother and me, and so we had to flee. 
and we haven't, we don't know anything about them yet. And as they're sharing, I'm realizing like how deeply rooted, if you don't know that you're loved, if you don't know that you belong, and if you don't know that your life has a purpose, how easy it is to get to making bad decisions. Because what were those people just trying to do? They were trying to fill this void. They, they wanted to fit in. They wanted to feel honored. They wanted to feel loved. And it was, it was one of those days I actually, I called my dad that day, bawling my eyes out. I mean, I was a mess. And I, I think I said something like, Dad, thank you for not being a drug addict. <laughs> Thank you for like not abandoning me. Like thank you for not abusing mom. I just went down a giant list and my dad had zero like zero context. Like zero context. And he was just like, Mighty, like what is what are you what? And I was just like, a dad. And like, just like, um, so two things. One, my dad is amazing. Like he's an exceptional man. But he's hurt me. And the beauty of that is that it's a reminder that no matter how great your dad or your mom is, they're gonna hurt you. Wow, Maddie, that's uplifting. <laughs> I know, but here's the thing. God in his goodness is our perfect father and has given us a perfect mother. And so I don't care how much pain, like no, there is no pain large enough to stop you from coming to the Father, who simply wants to love on you, who simply wants to be present, and who simply wants you to meet there. All we have to do is recognize like, that we belong. Your greatest desire, you know that song, um, the, the, like, what is love? No more, all right, cool. Um, in that song, it's like, what is love? Baby, don't hurt me because we've been hurt so many times, right? But God is love, and he can't hurt. The only thing he can do is heal. And if you're here and you're like, yeah, Mari, that's nice, and you're on stage, and you can say all the words you want, um, I'm too broken. And, and I've, I've been hurt way too much by my parents, and I don't care how, God, how great your God is, he can't fix me. Like, that's a lie. And I want to invite you today to already start tapping into that, that identity of like what we're called to do. Because at the root of it, you know, I am a daughter of the beloved king who is not moved by the world, for my God is with me and goes before me. I do not fear because I am his. And just to clarify, one of my issues with women's sessions was every time that we talked about women's sessions, they were like, you're a princess. Yay. And like you had like a field of like, you know, <laughs> a tiara and like a tutu and you're like frolicking, right? Like, no, no, no. If you can't identify as that, like you are like princess warrior, you know what I mean? Like Mulan, you know? Like, you can be Mulan, like I related to Mulan, right? Like, like that's still daughter because a daughter knows her worth and a daughter doesn't settle, okay? A daughter doesn't settle because she knows her worth is so great because she knows it's so good. And that's going to be, you're not settling in life. You're not settling in relationships. You're not settling in friendships. You're not settling in what you're studying. Like, you're not settling. Can we all repeat? I am a daughter of God. And I will not settle. If you actually believe that, I promise you it will change your life. Okay? All right. So, you are loved. And sometimes God asks us to give up stuff. But it's because he has something way more in store. Amen? Amen. All right, now sister. Here's a picture of my sisters. We look alike, right? That's the three of us over here. And these are just my friends. I just, I just love my friends. And that's me as a baby. Do you like my little fro? I think my fro is so cute. Okay, so sister. Raise your hand if you have biological sisters. Oh, that's a lot of you. Wow, okay. Raise your hand if you have friends. Whew. Okay. If not, Jesus is your friend. 
I always feel weird like asking that. I'm hoping everyone's raising their hand, but I'm secretly holding my breath. All right, so being a sister, here's the thing. When it comes to biological sisters, I love them. They're amazing. My, like we look a lot alike, but wow, are we different. We're all successful in our fields, but I mean, wow, are we different. But growing up, it was like, why can't you be more like your sister in this way? And do, 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 do. And I was like, I'm me. That's why, you know? But it took me a while. And sisters, you know, they're just mean to you. They bully you. I remember one time we had like dress up and I had to like, they were like, oh, let's do makeovers. And I was like, okay, you know? And they made me look like a horrifying clown. They made me so ugly, guys, like you don't understand. I was like nine, like it was like nose and like thing. And then I was like, okay, your turn. And they just laughed at me and walked away. There's literally a picture. <laughs> it's funny now. I cried for days, but <laughs> at the time it was like, there's a picture of me like, like this, dressed like a clown, and my sister's like, <clears throat> Jesus has healed some wounds. All right, so my sisters, I love them. They have hurt me, and I've had to have conversations with them of like, hey, I love you, but when you say this, this affects me, right? When it comes to friends, if you don't, all of us have friends that are women. I'm gonna be honest, sometimes female friends are more complicated than guy friends. Can I say that? Okay, cool, cool, thanks. Okay, here's the thing. There's just so much like connivingness going on and like, in front of you, they're like, oh my gosh, I love what you're wearing. Like in Mean Girls, who's seen Mean Girls? Mean Girls, classic, right? Like, oh my gosh, I love what you're wearing. She's like, wow, that's so ugly. Like, da, da, da. It's like, it's extreme and Mean Girls makes it funny, but there's some real stuff in there, you know? It's like constantly plotting against the other, constantly comparing. Instagram just makes it worse because everyone just puts their best life and then you have the likes and it's like, what's dependent on that, and then you're just constantly living in this thing of who's better, me or her, and then what's, what's, what's at the root of this? It's causing division, it's causing issues, it's causing so much, like, so many issues among women that I firmly believe the main issue that women have is oftentimes caused by other women. Is that a problem? Yes or no? Thank you, that's a massive problem. The amount of people, and I've had friendships that are really great and beautiful, and I've had friendships that have destroyed me. Like, lied to, um, betrayed. Uh, really unhealthy, codependent friendships that have led to destruction, um, and have led to a lot of different things. So, in Spanish there's a saying that says, dime con quien andas y te diré quien eres, right? And it says, tell me who you're with and I'll tell you the kind of person you're gonna be. Guys, like, be careful who your friends are because this is gonna be a really big thing. Um, and I'm gonna bring this picture back up. This group of women to my right, this is my accountability group. Um, and so what does that mean? A group of six women living in Miami said, we need to work together and we're trying to get to heaven, but we stink sometimes, so let's try to help each other out, right? So we meet every two weeks and we talk about our hits and our downs, right? Like ups and downs and we share and we pray with each other. And one of the things that's interesting, we call each other on. So if I'm slacking in life, which happens pretty often, um, <laughs> they'll be like, hey, Mari, like, what's up? What are you doing? Why aren't you doing this? Like, what's going on? And it's amazing what can happen when we have this. Going to Franciscan and being a part of a household, being around women that like really, I mean, just made me better. Because for many, many years, I thought women were just catty and couldn't do anything but hurt me. And the Lord wants to understand, like, we as women are called to uphold each other, right? Strong women are called to build each other up, to support and laugh when there's no reason. It's a thing of joy. It's amazing what can happen when you are able to say to the other person, like, hey, you are awesome and you are good and I am here to be with you and make you better. Amen? Can we, ladies, can you just help me out? Can you just tell me, like, Yes, I'm going to try to be a better friend. I know it sounds like super lame and you're probably thinking, like in my head, you've got a friend in me by Toy Story just started playing in my mind. You've got a friend in me. Okay, sorry. 
but it's this thing, right? That we are called to really build each other up. So before you, number one, don't compare yourself because thank God we're all different. Number two, help each other know each other's gifts. Every single birthday, my friends and I gather and we literally say something positive about the person whose birthday it is. Who does that? My friends do, they're really cool. And if you're like, wow, that sounds really fake, like I don't know how I'm gonna find those people, it took me a very, very long time to find these people, okay? So like ask the Lord to put these people in your, in your space, but a great place to start is look around the room, uh, literally look around to you. Start with those people, because they're here. Yeah, okay? All right, third one is gonna be mother. Okay, now mother, that's me and my mom. Isn't she cute? Isn't my mom beautiful? Come on, round of applause for my mom, because she's adorable. Yeah, yeah. My mom is so good, and she knows how to love me, and I love this picture so much because um, I have a deep love for food, and you'll hear more about that later. I could talk about food for hours. And, no, I'm, I'm serious. And I love this because, like, she's loving me the best way a mother can with food. And it's just such a, oh, like, look at the joy in my face. I'm just like, yes, get that pizza. Okay, sorry. When I say mother, let's make two things clarifications here. Some of you here are chaperones and are actual mothers. Some of you here are teens. Maybe you are a mother. Maybe you've already had a child, either here or in heaven. Okay, so let's recognize that first. But what I'm saying is that as women, we are naturally called to be mother. Even if we don't have a physical child. So like I currently don't have a physical child, but I'm still called to be mother. Mari, what do you mean? What are you talking about? Okay, first of all, this is gonna be too TMI, but it's all women, so I don't care. Okay, so recently I, was at my best friend's house when she gave birth in her room, in a tub, in her house. Yeah, yeah. And I was there for all of it. Anyone ever seen a birth before? Wow, it's life changing. Okay, <laughs> the placenta is a whole other story. We'll get to that later. But wow, it's amazing. Okay. <laughs> In that moment, a couple of things was going through my mind. The theology of the body, if you don't know, is pretty much saying that the body, in fact, and only the body, is capable of making visible the invisible, both the spiritual and the divine, which means that the ways that our bodies are created, we can understand more of who God is, which is wild to me. And even if we're not having like physical children, we all have wombs and the way that our bodies are created. We all have a monthly reminder of what, why our bodies are created. We, you know, it's a love-hate relationship, but still. It's this aspect of this, like our bodies literally are created to make space for another. Like every time you get pregnant, like a, a new organ, like a placenta grows for that specific child. And the, I know this is too a TMI, but really, no, it's not, because I, I wish I knew more about this when I was younger. The ways our bodies form is wild. Now, if you're not called, like, why am I saying this? Because we live in a culture where women are taught to hate their bodies. Where women are not only, I'm not only talking about like, oh, like you're not, like your body isn't good enough, whatever, whatever. I'm talking about women are said, hey, like go on the pill and stop everything that makes you a woman, even though like having a regular period makes, means that your body is functioning great, by the way. But doctors say, kill it and make it go bad. So it's opposite of what we're supposed to do, right? And we live in a world that says, you know, that, that woman, I forgot what her name was, she gave that speech, the valedictorian speech, that was like standing up for like, I'm here and I'm successful because, you know, I can have an abortion. I was like, wait, what? Like, no, like, the culture is hating so much because women are the only ones that can literally create life. And again, I'm not just speaking physically, I'm also speaking emotionally. And in an emotional way, number one, women are called to make space for others. We're called to know that we are beacons of making room for the other and to be able to listen to them and to be able to embrace them and to be present. Women are called to be able to know that we're not meant to do it alone. Like we are not meant to 
do all these things by ourselves. Like the Lord is with us and wants to restore us and wants us to like help each other out and lift each other up. And as a woman and as a mother, we need to know that we are good and are strong. And so there's two quotes here. And I'll go back to Bride in a second, but it says, the strength of a mother is second to none, even when she is in times of stress, when she is fighting for her own demons, when she is beyond exhaustion, both mentally and physically, nothing will stop her from finding the strength she needs to do for her children what she needs to get done. Replace children with like, with, for others. Because there are times that as a teacher or as a whatever, like I don't want, you know, I had a really rough weekend or like a really rough time and I don't want to go up in front of people and talk about Jesus some days. Just real talk. But because of the love that I have for God, because of the love that I have for my students, I'm going to go up. I'm not going to fake it. I'm gonna, there are literally days that I'll tell my students, like, I really don't want to be here today, but I love you. So I'm here, you know. <laughs> it's this aspect of being able to call and really build up. And the second is being a mother is discovering strength you didn't know you had and dealing with things. Ladies, every single one of you has a past and has struggles. That's one thing that I can say across the board. But if we can, are able to embrace these things and know our goodness and know that we are a gift, then it's going to make the huge difference. And to be present for each other and to be able to make space for that. And the aspect of bride, you're probably looking at me like, I'm 16, I'm not getting married. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't get married at 16. But is this, unless you're married. <clears throat> That's a whole other story. So, <laughs> different times, okay. But here's the thing. As bride, it means that, and this is all Disney's fault. Let's blame Disney for a second. Disney has this idea that when you get married, your life is going to be happily ever after everyone happily I, I have a major issue with disney because it's like you meet for five seconds it's love at first sight which i don't believe in and then it's like something goes bad and then they get together in the last five minutes and they're married and then whoo, they live happily ever after whoo. Um, i'm not married but marriage is not easy i can tell you that for a fact and it's this whole thing and one of the things that i love about sacramental marriage is that in our marriages who's number one it's not your husband. In fact, it's actually unfair for you to put that kind of pressure on your husband. Because guess what? Your husband's also broken and also has major issues and came from a family that has their issues. So you putting that kind of pressure on another man is not going to be helpful. But primarily, before anyone's spouse, we need to be God's spouse, like Jesus. Because he is the one that can fulfill your every desire. He is the one that can know that you are loved, that you are good, and that you are incredible. I remember growing up and having like so many trust issues with men. Um, my sister was in an abusive relationship for four years and it like wrecked me like growing up and I had like major fears of love and major fears of a lot of things. Um, so much so that after my first serious boyfriend said I love you, I broke up with him the next day. I was a different place, thank you. <laughs> but it was this thing like it was just too much, right? And so by me going to the Lord, like he brought those things to light and really shed light on like what is actual truth of love. He reminded me that I am good. He reminded me that I am loved. He reminded me that I am created for something higher and greater than this world has to offer. And he reminded me above all that I am a gift. And if I recognize that I am a gift, then I can recognize the goodness in other people. I can recognize like it's a task of every man it's the dignity of every woman. The task of every woman is the dignity of every man. And if we really understood this, like at the core, everything would be different. Ladies, I firmly, firmly, firmly believe that your voice and your heart can transform the world. And yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on with women. If we bring our brokenness to God, it could be a massive game changer. I'm going to give you guys um, a minute while we get ready. And I'm going to ask Trace, Taylor to come up. There, there she is. Um, I want you guys to think, out of these three roles of daughter, sister, and mother, with bride there as well, like which one of these is, are you finding like really challenging? Like, which one of these do you think 
like the Lord really, you're going to pray and bo pray boldly for the Lord to restore. So I'm going to ask two of my prayer ministers to come up and join me as well. And I'm going to ask that you're bold. And why do I say bold? I'm going to literally ask you to legitimately stand up. And so we're going to enter a time of prayer. I want you all to sit up straight, sit up straight. Shake it off, shake it off. Shake it off. Oh, I'm sorry. <clears throat> My mind is like a jukebox, I swear. <laughs> all right. I want you guys to really pray for a second. We're going to pray with me. And whenever I say, like, identity as mother, if it's mother, I would, I'm going to ask you to guys stand. Whatever group we're doing, there is such a beautiful power in praying for one another. I have the gift of being here in Miami, um, where the people on stage I've known for years, where my college roommate is in the audience. And it's this thing of people that have been around me to support me and love me are here still supporting me and loving me today. And that's because my friendships and my relationships have been rooted in God. And do lies come? Yes. Are there times that I still feel abandoned? <laughs> yes. Are there times that I still feel unlovable? Yes. Are there times that I say, God, like, I am so unworthy. Why am I up here with a mic? Like, what are you doing? Right? Yeah, there's a lot of those moments. There's times that I feel just broken. But these women... God has used to build me up and remind me of my worth. And that is why I'm not settling. And that is why I'm up here. And that is why I'm able to do the unthinkable. So whatever your story is, and maybe it's some of those things that I mentioned that people in juvie struggled with. And if you're here and you are a sexual abuse survivor, if you're here, and you have been hurt, if you're here and you have been abandoned by your parents, if you have been lied to, if you're struggling with hatred of your body or eating disorders or suicidal thoughts or depression, like whatever it is that you're going through, he is with you. And right now, I wanna invite you to actually pray. And yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll have the mics and we'll, we'll save things with our words, with our mouths. I want you to pray with your heart and say, like, God, God, I, I, uh, like, I need you. So let's pray. Amen? 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 Amen. 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 Let's go. All right. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.